Hi friends and welcome to episode 9 of my Theme Park Thursday series. Today's layout actually went together really, really quickly, which I love and kind of didn't expect. It is a single page layout and basically what I did is I made three mini layouts of three separate uh, events, um, things that each had their own journaling, but I wanted to put them together. I didn't, I don't have room in my book to do a whole page about a picture of me with a popcorn bucket or a whole page of, you know, the fact that Disney World still has pay phones, which is kind of weird. Um, my friend Kathy, I would have maybe liked to do a whole page, but I think I'm going to do a, a scrapbook of all the friends I have met at Disney over the years and how I know them and you know, I think that'll be fun. But for this book, she just gets part of a page. So stay tuned to see the process, how I put this together, what the measurements are. And um, yeah, hopefully this is an idea that you can use for yourself in your own scrapbooks. Okay, so this layout has three unrelated photos. Uh, this is my friend Kathy, who originally was going to get her own page, but now she's going to have to share with my Mickey yellow Mickey balloon popcorn bucket and my daughter who we made a she made a comment about what's what's a payphone so they still have a payphone apparently at Disney although I don't think you can put money in it you have to use a credit card so or call collect um so I want to do a layout where I combine these three separate photos together on one layout and sometimes that happens um just because of what I have left and and these these kind of tell a story and so I want to be able to journal about each of these things and so I think I'm going to do a kind of a um actually I might do these two separate and put this one in its own um in its own column I think I'm going to do like a, in my head I think of it as a four square I'll do a, ba a background page and then I'm going to have a a square here a square here and a rectangle here and we're going to make a like a little collage page of these different things. And I think I want to do it on black paper. Hmm. I either want to do it on black or white. And then each of these will have a different color. So let me decide which, oh, maybe I want to do it on this stripe. I could do it on this stripe and then each of these could have a solid color and then this could be the background. Because otherwise, I tell you what, this is stuff is hard to use. This one with the tickets is also going to be a little bit hard to use. I think I'm going to do it like that. I'm going to do three sections, and then I can use the colors in here. So I can use the yellow. This is that cosmic yellow that we used last week for the tiny strips. Um, I can use that, and then I can use... I think I will use cardstock, because I don't... Well... Yeah, I don't know what extra what extra I've got, and I think I want to use regular old cardstock so that I can, um, yeah, so that I can journal on it. All right, so I think I'm going to get some red and some blue. All right, so here's the blue, and I think I'll use that one for Kathy, um, and then we have two current reds. So we have cranberry. And we have red, and neither one of them, interestingly enough, is the right red. So it's this one is to the cranberry. Oh, let's zoom down. The cranberry is a little too dark, but the red is a little too orange. We need that red. And you know what? Actually, we used to have a red called scarlet. I wonder if scarlet would match. All right, so this is Scarlet, and I, th oh, that's a perfect match, the Scarlet. So I'm gonna use the Scarlet, and not either of our current colors. So I am a cardstock lover, as many scrapbookers are, and so I do have a stash of old retired colors, and I'm very frugal with it. So I'm definitely gonna use this for this smaller picture right here. I want to have, like a half an inch around here, and I want to be able to leave a gap in between. And I can't do that math in my head. So where's my ruler? All right. So if I want to have a half an inch on the outsides, and I'm left with 11. Half of 11 is five and a half. I think I'm gonna do these at five and a quarter. Oh, but that's not wide enough for this. 
my picture is five and my picture is five and a quarter. So this is going to have to be five and a half. I may well do that one a little bit narrower. So I'm going to do this at five and a half and I may have to trim. Oh, I have to fold out the arm. I may have to trim the papers down after I get this layout kind of figured out. So I'm going to do a five and a half inch square for this. And then I'm going to do a five and a half inch. Which way did I cut? Okay, I cut it. I cut this end off, so I'm going to cut this way. So I end up with still some mostly 12 inch strips. Five and a half and five and a half. So I might not be able to have the full um, the full half inch strip. That that's I think that math is going to work out okay. If I just do this one at five and a half. I'm not going to trim the other end of this yet until I know how much to trim off exactly based on what this is going to look like. So I want these and this. Okay. So I can't really get the whole half inch, but I can get a pretty even division between these different pieces. I'm going to stick these two down first. What is that? That's like a half inch, but a half inch is going to be too much because I can't do it that. And I don't have any way to measure like three eighths of an inch. I'm just going to have to eyeball it, which is never fun, especially when I've got this diagonal stripe behind, which is not super easy on the eyes. So I'm just going to Okay, one thing that's super nice I'm noticing about this paper is that the yellow stripe is right here on the corner and it's obviously a perfect 90 degrees because it's on that corner. So I'm going to line up my square with the corner and the corner because this is square and I know that is square. So now I know that that is straight even though these lines are trying to trick me. I can't really do it in the other direction, so I'm just going to have to line up with this. I'll just bump this up against there. And look at that. Uh oh, now it's not, that's definitely not straight. I just lied to you. Okay, how did that happen? All right, I can use the, um, I use this little line. I think that might be a three eighths, the tip of that little piece. Does that come to three eighths? Nope. Yeah, that comes up about, about an eighth of an inch. So I was able to line it up using that. All right, and now I'll put this other piece down. And then now I'm just going to butt this up against here, which is not feeling real straight, and cut. Sure, I need to cut, you know, I just drew with a little piece of pencil, a little piece of pencil. I drew a little pencil mark with a full giant hole pencil. We'll see if that fits. works but it's not looking straight because of these dang diagonal lines and maybe because I didn't maybe because it isn't straight so once I get it on I'm going to double check the straightness again and see that kind of looks straight all right I'm going to zoom in and show you what I'm doing So you can see right here, there's that little half a line right here in the um, on the ruler. And up here, it's like almost touching and down here, it's not. So that means this is not quite, quite straight. Is anyone gonna know? No. Will I know? Will I care? Yes. Okay. 
All right. So there's that. Um, mostly straight-ish. Mostly straight-ish. Okay, that's going to be good enough. Good enough for horseshoes, as the old saying goes. Actually, I don't know if that's really an old saying. And then I would put... I could actually trim this photo down a smidge. And I could trim that photo a smidge. And then this one can just go in here. Um, actually, I might trim that down quite a bit. I don't really care about the people behind me. I don't care about the top of this. I wouldn't mind cutting this guy off completely, but he... Uh, He's right there by my popcorn bucket. I guess I could have silhouetted that. I haven't done that in a while. We'll cut her. We'll leave this right here. All right, this is going to be a pretty fast layout, I think. Maybe I'll double mat this one. Because I have a little bit more of that red. Oops, that scarlet paper. Nope, it's too small. Oh, this one's all right doesn't match what she's wearing or what I'm wearing, but I think that brings it together a little bit. So I'm gonna put us matted. And basically in my head, I think what I'm doing is I'm creating three mini layouts on my layout. So I have a, um, a you know, a five by five layout, a five and, or five and a half, but inch layout, I have a, um, you know, five and a half by 12 layout or 11 and a half. And then I have, a another five and a half inch layout. I like that little detail right there. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll still trim a little bit off just cause I want to be able to journal and or put titles. Okay. Um, and I think, I think that's kind of all I'm going to do, let me look at the embellishments and see if there's anything in the embellishments or the stickers. But the embellishments are right here and I'd have to like look around for the, um, look around for the stickers. Well, that could be fun. Yeah, see that, but that's a different red again. I'll go with that one. I was very happy. I love to be able to meet my scrapbooking friends, you know, people I've only known online. Um, I love being able to meet in person and it doesn't, it doesn't happen enough, but I love it when it happens at Disney. So, okay, I think we're going to use that and then I'll pull out my stickers in a minute, but I think I'll put these down first. I think I'm going to put her name up here. And, and I haven't been um, showing you how I put the stickers down because I figure it takes time and it's boring, but um, Kathy will be a short thing to write. So I'll just do this again in case you haven't seen me do um, the way I do my sticker letters. So I'm using my zero centering ruler, except mine's not a zero centering because I have one that um, was from before, but it's the same, this acrylic ruler. Um, Oops, where'd I put the other sheet of stickers? There they are. Each. Hi. Thank you for not being named, you know, Pocahontas or something that was going to take a lot of space. All right, and then I'm going to use my grid. And I actually put these on the wrong side. And the sticker letters are about three quarters of an inch high. So usually if I go down an inch, I want these to be centered. So I think I actually need another ruler. Oh, good. Here's the zero centering. This is where the zero centering comes really in handy. So I've put the zero centering. This is a five and a half inches wide, right? So it will be two and three three quarters on either side. So that's the zero. And I know that I can put the T and 
and and rather than lining it up with the ruler this time I'm lining it up with this just kind of visually um, with the top leaving about a quarter of an inch space right there this one's gonna be a little bit harder because it's skinnier at the top than at the bottom so I'm gonna stick these down and then I will um, arrange them. I'm not going to stick them all the way. I'm just kind of pre-positioning them. And then I will come in here and line up with the, the bottom of that T. Position my sticker letters. All right. Okay, that looks good. I put this right here. Little yay. Oh, I could use these little epoxies. That could be fun. Oh, I'm gonna pull out the mats, I think, and use one of the mats to journal this little section. Okay, here are the mats. Um, and I want one that I can use just part of it, and I want it to be that way. Like this. I think I want yellow. That one. Or do I need red? Maybe I need red. Cause that's yellow, but I think I'm gonna use this one. These are six and a half by four and a half. So I'm gonna cut it three and a quarter. And then I'm gonna journal about getting to meet my friend, Kathy. So that will go there. And then What's the point of a payphone that you can't put your finger in and see if you can get a dime back or something? I told my daughter that that was what we used to do and she looked at me like I was a lunatic. I don't know if I ever actually got like a dime out of a payphone. And I think I'm not gonna, oh, you know, I might use the popcorn bucket from the embellishments. Let's see, let's see what we've got. Maybe I'll pull out the stickers. All right, that's a big embellishment. Is there a sticker of the popcorn bucket? No. Hmm. I could use this, what a sight. Okay. I think I'm going to use the popcorn bucket. I need something else, though, like down here. Some kind of a... Some kind of something. Uh, yep, I don't know what that's going to be. I wonder if there's something in the... Um, I guess I could use a camera. Is there a camera? No, oh, it says say cheese on it. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna rummage through these and see what I can find, and um, not make you not make you watch through all of it. I don't know. Maybe I will. I I don't know. I don't know what to do. You guys, what do you want? What do you like? Okay, I think I'm gonna use some of these little epoxy dots just down here to be my third little cluster. Um, and I think I'm gonna foam square this. 
Well, um, I don't know. Maybe I'm not. I'm not, I'm not going to foam square. I'm just going to stick it down. All right. And I'm going to journal and be right back. I'm going to use, I think I'm going to keep using the, um, the Navy pen that I've been journaling with because this is, this has blue and not black. Um, and I like, and that has black, but I'm going to, I'm going to journal with the Navy and I will be back. Okay, I think I'm done. This has actually turned out to be a super quick layout, which kind of surprised me. I thought that it would uh, take me a little bit longer because I was essentially doing three separate layouts, but they were tiny little layouts. So basically I was just, I'm just doing the three pictures and the journaling, separate journaling for each one. So here I just talked about how it's always fun when one of my friends is at, is at Disney and I get to meet them. Talked about the popcorn bucket, talked about the payphone, and I ended up just using a question mark from the ABC stickers because I couldn't find anything else. I didn't feel like the epoxies or any of that worked. Um, but I think that this is a, a good way to conserve space in your scrapbook. If you have random pictures that kind of go together, but don't really go together, you can still create mini layouts on one big layout and put them together. So Kathy, I don't know if you watch my YouTube channel. If you do, I hope it's okay that I put your picture in here. I did cover up your last name so that, you know, if anyone wants to search for you online, they'll have trouble because there's a lot of Kathy's, but, um, yeah, I was glad to use the Adventure Parks. I don't plan to use it um, for all of these layouts, and but it's brand new, you know? But I do plan to pull back out the um, Birthday Bonanza and the um, Sweet Summer, because I love those colors. I want to incorporate all of those and not... I don't want you to be able to see in my scrapbook, oh, this is when that Adventure Parks collection came out. I want to mix it up and, and keep it fun. And to show you that you do not have to purchase the theme park collection in order to do theme park pages. So I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you learned something from it and it's something that you can use in your own scrapbooks. And um, I'll be back next week with another edition of Theme Park Thursday. Thanks a lot and happy scrapbooking.